my target audience, as I said, are those of you who are considering careers in data science and figuring out how to get into them. Um, so that will be the focus of my talk, just to set the expectations. All right, so preparing for this presentation, I thought, okay, let's, uh, let's think about my target audience. You are probably coming from an analytical background. Let's see if we can turn this into an equation. So, of course, I came up with an equation. This is your data science potential. I plus T plus C plus M plus HW minus A. And I dare you to, I challenge you to try to guess what those letters are. But, of course, I'll go through them one by one. And then at the end, you can figure out what your data science potential is. So starting with the I, it's quite obvious. It's interest. Obviously, you have to be interested in data science. Now, the fact that you are here probably means you got 100% on this already. So, so that's fine for you. But, of course, if, I if you just give me a couple minutes to just say why I think data science is interesting, why I am passionate about data science. And it is because it's twofold, really. One is, on one hand, I know that data science is going to change our lives forever. The, the companies and organizations using our data for good purposes, it's going to change how we live, how we work, how we stay healthy. So, so that revolution is coming, and uh, I'll say a few words at the end about that. But also, the second reason why I think data science is amazing is because it's such a great career option for people with analytical backgrounds, for people who have an interest in analytics. And it's because... Um, there's a lot of jobs. There's a lot of jobs available. More and more companies are starting to do data science, and they need data scientists. So there's a large demand for these sort of jobs. It's quite an easy transition if you've done an academic degree in some kind of analytical topic. You can just translate those skills you've got into a business environment and thereby be a successful data scientist. And also, because there's large demand, it means that your career is pretty much secure once you've gone into it. You'll have a great salary, you'll have career progression, and perhaps even the most exciting thing is you can have a career in anything you want. If you are an academic, uh, like I used to be, then you know you go where the job is and you don't have a choice. But with data science, you can say, I want to work in Berlin and I want to work in the gaming industry, and you will find a company that's hiring in that industry. So it's a great career to have, and so you have to have interest, but you all score 100% on that already. So then we move on to the T, which is, of course, the tech skills. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on this. When people think about careers, they think, oh, do I have the right technical skills? And of course, they are important to get your first data science job, but they're actually just one of my six factors here. So it's not, don't put too much emphasis on this. But going through just my thoughts on, uh, on what tech skills you need, you will have seen these types of Venn diagrams before, saying that the three main skill areas that you need is programming and coding, it's math and statistics, and it's domain expertise. Now, if I, if I put aside domain expertise for now and focus on the actual technical skills, within coding, uh, I really think that Python is winning the data science war. Um, no offense to any R programmers out there, but most of the people who now do data science use Python in some way, shape, or form. But of course, R is a good, good second. Um, Java is also quite predominant. You have to have some kind of SQL or database skills, obviously. Um, and by now, you kind of, to get your first job, you really do need to know a bit about how to do MapReduce. And also, Spark and Scala are coming up as, as big topics as well. You don't have to be an expert in all of those but you should have really good skills in at least one and have a good basic understanding of pretty much all the other ones. Um, so don't be a one-trick pony, know a bit about all of it, but also make sure that you are quite, quite strong in one of them. You don't have to be a software engineer, obviously, but you do need to be very strong in programming in one of these languages. For maths and statistics, it's uh, your standard sort of uh, concepts like frequentist versus Bayesian, uh, regression tests, Monte Carlo, random forest, decision trees. You need to know what they all are, and you need to at least have a basic understanding of how they work. And then on top of that, of course, there's your sort of general data skills around 
How do you work with data? How do you clean data? How do you do parameter transformations, feature engineering? And how do you work with databases? So these are the sort of technical skills you need to be aware of. Um, be also aware that the level of skill that you need is going up because the industry is getting more and more familiar with these and they know they're more particular about what they want. Um, but also don't focus too much on it, as I said. This is one of six different elements to your profile in becoming a data scientist. So we got interest, we got technical skills. What could the C be? Communication skills absolutely critical for your first job. And this is because, as a data scientist, you will be placed in a company where pretty much everyone else, most likely, will not have a clue of what you're talking about. So you really need to be able to explain to them what you're doing in a non-technical way. You need to be able to make the case to them of why they should give you their data, um, because they'll be holding on to it dearly and not wanting to give it to you. And quite likely, you'll have to be able to go to the boardroom and talk to the senior managers and say, why sh should they spend more on doing data science? So you really need to have excellent communication skills. And of course, the best way to practice those is to speak with other non-experts. So perhaps people in your family or any non-technical friends you've got. Try to explain to them, for example, what your technical work is about. And if they're able to understand it, well, then you're already well underway um, to, to training those communication skills. So interest, technical skills, communication skills. Next comes the M, and that's motivation. And you will need motivation because if you are an academic, there is a little bit of a hurdle to get over. I say it's easy to translate those skills, and it is but there is a little bit of translation that has to go into it. And there is a bit of a hurdle to overcome. So you need that motivation to go, yeah, I want to become a data scientist, and I'm going to do it, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there. And you're going to need that motivation, because then comes the hard work of actually preparing yourself for your new career. Now, I've talked about how to train your communication skills. In terms of training your tech skills, there's, of course, great ways of doing that, too. Um, a good place to start is obviously the, um, the MOOCs, the online courses like Coursera, edX, Khan Academy. Lots and lots of free courses that you can take that will give you a good basic overview of these fields. And there's also a lot of tutorials around in terms of your programming skills, improving your Python skills, for example, or R, whatever you choose that to be your language. Um, but what I would say is that Coursera today, for example, is not enough to prove your skills. So many people do Coursera nowadays, so many, millions of people, well, no, I'm probably exaggerating, but thousands of people certainly have gone through the Stanford machine learning course. And so the fact that everyone's done it means that it has very little value anymore. So the next thing to do after you've got that basic understanding is to just get your hands dirty. Do something, do a project. The easy way to do a pre-packaged project is, of course, to go to Kaggle or similar websites and find a data set, find a question that's been asked of that data set, and just go ahead and solve the challenge. The other way of doing it is to set your own challenge. Think of a question, something you're curious about, something in society that you're curious about. Go out and find data sets. There's lots and lots of open data sets online. Um, certainly both in the US and the UK. I, I don't know about Germany, but uh, these data sets are available globally. Download the data sets, scrape, scrape the web if you want, figure out a way to solve that question that you've set, and then maybe find some way to visualize it and present it online in a way that's really engaging and communicates a story. And if you've done all of that, you basically got your job offers in a bag, because companies then see that not only do you have your skills that you've proved, you've got the visualization skills, the communication skills, but you also had that motivation and the interest to go out and find this solution yourself. So these are all great things that add up to your data science potential. What's then the negative? What's the minus A? It is academia. And unfortunately, a lot of employers are quite skeptical about someone who spent a lot of time in academia. If you have a PhD, if you've done one or two postdocs after that, 
at some point it starts to count negatively towards your profile because the companies are maybe skeptical about whether you are able to translate those very academic skills into that commercial environment and into doing a business project. So the way to counter that is, again, doing these projects that are done with real data sets, with messy data sets, with a question that shows that you have an interest in commercial environment. And also learning the language, learning words like deliverable or return on investment. What does that mean? What does it mean for a company that they want to do data science? Why do they want to do it in the first place? And how would my role fit into their company's success? So there are definitely ways to counter that. And there we have it, your data science potential. You can now, in your head, work out what it is um, and then figure out where you're weak and then take those areas and do what you can to improve on your profile. And then, of course, hit the jackpot and get your dream job in this very fascinating industry. So just to wrap up, I wanted to, to say a few more words on why I think you should care about this industry and why I love this industry. The data revolution is coming. It's going to change everything about how we live, as I said, and how we work. And I wanted to just finalize on three areas that I think are going to be most radically changing our lives going forward. The first one is the smart home and the Internet of Things. Uh, so these are the Google Assistant speakers that were launched a couple of weeks ago. There's similar ones from Amazon, the Eco, and other solutions as well. And these are these speakers that sit in your home and you speak to them and then they do things for you. They schedule meetings. They tell you what the weather's like. And ultimately, of course, the idea is they become the hub for your whole home. They control your heating. They control your lights. They control when you shop, uh, when, you, when things get delivered to your house. So the smart home is, is absolutely radically going to change our home life. The second one is obviously self-driving cars. The transport sector is going to be completely disrupted when we truly have cars that can drive on their own. No one has a car on their own anymore. You just call one from the street when you need it. Um, and also lorry transport and goods transport completely changed. And finally, of course, personalized medicine. So the idea that your doctor will call you up three months before your first cancer symptom and tell you, hey, you need to come in for a checkup because we think there might be something wrong with you. Again, all of these three disciplines are completely driven by data and machine learning, and they are going to change our lives. So imagine a couple of years from now, maybe you're lying at home, you're sleeping, your home wakes you up to say, hey, you need to go to hospital because I, I'd sense a, an unequal heart rhythm in you. I think you might be having a heart attack. And I've got your, your car, it's driven up to the front door. You just step out, get in the car, the car drives you to the hospital, Doctors take care of you, and you're fine. That's the sort of future that I dream of, and that's the sort of future that you guys can ma uh, make happen. So that's it uh, for me. Uh, we've got a stand up in the expo hall, so if you want to come and speak to me or my colleague David, we'll be there today and tomorrow until about 4 o'clock tomorrow. Come and talk to us about data science careers, or also come and talk to us about how to set up data science projects with data scientists and how to get started with data. And that's it. Thank you.